And we are the Talking Hats. We're back from break here with segment two for today's show. Uh, we're going to pick back up with our, our, our quarterback talk. I uh, just wanted to shout out Gary and thank him again for joining us. He had to go uh, so he can get back into the debate with us, but he'll join us on a future show uh, so we can uh, go back and forth again. It was, it was fun. We can do that again. Um, but before we left there, we were comparing uh, Tannehill to uh, Josh Allen. And like I was saying, I didn't think that was crazy because like I've said before, uh, you know, I brought up the fact that he played receiver in college at one point. So he's able to run. I think you were, or maybe Gary was saying that he, he just, he's kind of stands in the pocket, but he, he has the ability to escape. He just probably doesn't do it as much as Josh Allen, but he has that ability. Uh, and, and Chris, you were, I think you jumped in there too. So uh, go ahead and pick back up with that whole debate we were talking about with them too. Well, I think they're similar quarterbacks because I mean, they got similar bills obviously, but um, you know, Tannehill, I was interested and what Gary said, because I don't think Tannehill's a game manager. Um, when I think of it, because he spoke to like the turnovers or something like that, I don't think a game manager turns the ball over. I think um, a game manager is exactly you want to pick apart a defense when you need to put the ball in spots when need to. You basically want to do um, your job when the coach calls upon you to make a play but you're not going to win the game for the team in terms of going out there throwing for four or 500 yards a night. So I think uh, Tannehill, I think I would rate him as a solid, he's a solid quarterback. He's actually right outside of my top five going into 2022. He's not in the top five, but he's right outside of the top five going in only because only because Tannehill is consistently one play away from getting to a Super Bowl. And um, it's just, it's the same as Josh Allen. Like we've been putting this guy on a pedestal, but what has Josh Allen really done yet? He hasn't done anything. He's, um, he was brought there to, you know, to put them over the hump, to consistently win against the Patriots in the playoffs, given we thought Tom Brady would be there, but he's still struggling, you know, going against the Patriots. There's no different, the dynamic in that conference is no different uh, in that division. Is no different with Josh Allen, Josh Allen at quarterback right now. So he's got to do some things to put them over the hump. And Tannehill is right in the same boat right now. If you look at their stats, I mean, they're almost identical. Um, they're both around 67%, 65% uh, completion percentages. Um, their passing yards is around the same, 37 to four, you know, 40, uh, 4,000 yards. Um, and uh, they both do the same types of things for their teams. Josh Allen just is a younger guy. He's the new thing, new kid on the block. Um, he had, he does some things with his legs. I, obviously, they're a little bit more flashy, but they both get the same things done with their legs. They run when they need to, get first downs when they need to, but nobody's sitting there hopefully game planning around th their running ability. So, um, you know, they both turn the ball over, uh, you know, I wish Josh Allen wouldn't turn the ball over so much, but he does. So um, in crucial situations too. So yeah, they're very similar quarterbacks to me. Um, so both outside, right outside of my top five right now. Rich, why do you hate Tannehill? Man, like, <laughs> cause it's just the running game that hides his deficiencies. I mean, they run the ball more than, than they throw the ball. So, and at the same time, you have AJ Brown. At the at that last play of the and game, Julio Jones. and who that's even blows my mind. Like they could have won that game if all you had to do was throw to AJ Brown or Julio Jones, and they were both open on on that route. They were they were running. They were well, you know open. you know how I feel about that game. I think the coach blew. Um, they had oh, no, an no. opportunity uh, to kick a field goal to take the lead, and they they chose to go yep, for it. Yep, yep, I hundred percent agree. It's just that we've seen this picture over and over again with the Titans, right? Like they have everything to go to the Super Bowl. They, 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 they're built that way and they have the defense, they have the offense. It's just what's lacking is their quarterback. And Tannehill has been there enough times to understand that sometimes you just have to throw the ball, but I don't think he has, I think his time has passed. I think they have to start a new chapter in that thing. I mean, yeah, he is a solid quarterback. If a team needs a solid quarterback, he is there. But this playoffs kind of proved to me, and it's always – I've always said this, is if you have him throw that ball, he they're not going to win this game. Because the first play of the game, he threw the ball, it was an interception. May Call what you want. 
I mean, if he was good or if he was whatever you needed him to be, he was not that. And unfortunately, yes, that those three points did matter, but momentum shifts very quickly. <laughs> you don't want a team like the Bengals to get momentum because you see what happens. I mean, yes, hindsight was 2020. We didn't expect them to go this far, but they did. And if you have a quarterback like that who does that in crucial situations, you may have to take a hard look at it and say, okay, guy, you know, this may be your last year. If you don't do anything, we're going to, we're going to get someone else. And that's how I feel because I was, I was leaning on Tennessee hard this year because I was like, man, like they had everything they needed to win. And unfortunately they didn't come up to. Yeah. I think I said that they earned the one seed for a reason. I I expected them to be there at the end. Uh, Chris, you got a last counterpoint in in defensive uh, Tannehill there. Well, I think it's interesting because last year Tannehill Okay, if you really look at his career compared to a guy like Matthew Stafford, I was not a Tannehill guy when he was with the Dolphins, and everybody swore up and down it was the Dolphins organization ruining him, and it wasn't Tannehill. I was one of those guys. And so I did not like Tannehill. I thought it was all on him, and it probably was all on him. He still was putting up pretty good numbers, 4,000-yard passer, you know, not much uh, uh, interceptions compared to the touchdown ratios right in the middle kind of like, I don't know, Aaron Rodgers or something like that, other than the turnovers. But once he got to the Titans, um, look at it, last year. um, Was it last year or the year year before last? Beat Tom Brady, you know, in the playoffs. Um, So basically his first year with the team, he goes on and beats Tom Brady in the playoffs. Um, Same thing as Matthew Stafford when he switched teams. Beat Tom Brady in the playoffs. So we're expecting more coming um, the next year with Tannehill, and he kind of didn't do what he was supposed to the following year. He was supposed to take a next step after that, and he didn't. And then this year, it's funny because what you say, they were a great team going into the season, but I don't think anybody picked them to finish in the Super Bowl or even uh, a a conference championship. Mm -hmm. Um, It probably has a lot to do with Tannehill being the face of that program. And um, I think that this will be year four uh, next year for him uh, with the Titans. He's settled in. He knows the system. Um, him and the head coach should have a great relationship. Um, you know, uh, running uh, – Henry's not getting any younger. Uh, I think they got to do something next year. I think you give him one more year. If he does the same thing in the playoffs, you know, kind of like – like I said, I've been on Aaron Rodgers for the same thing, um, just doing, doing something to lose, finding a way to lose when they should win. Um, then you got to think about blowing it up. But if guys are going to give uh, guys like Kirk Cousins all of these opportunities, come on, man. we got to give Tannehill one more year. This will be year four. Give him one more year, see what he can do with it. Uh, maybe put a piece or two around him. You know, maybe we draft a good defender, an edge rusher or something to help him out. And uh, we'll see what he does next year. <clears throat> Kirk Cousins is going to retire a very rich man. Uh, yeah, taking yeah. A, stealing all these owners' money. Um, <laughs> I wanted to, uh, I, I threw something out in one of our previous shows about how I think uh, Aaron Rodgers is kind of a, a glorified game manager because he puts up gaudy touchdown stats. His interceptions are low. And what that's like, what those stats say to me is he's a guy who won't take a chance. He'll, he has his guy he throws to. He won't throw to anybody else. He won't take a risk uh, when, the, when, the, when, the, when the season is boiling down, when he needs to make a play. He's not going to because he's worried about maybe not worried about those numbers, but worried about taking a chance. Um, and that, that's that might, that might sound like blasphemy to some people. Aaron Rodgers is a game manager, but how do you feel about that? I think I think you that's exactly right, one hundred percent right. And it's to a fault because um, he's not going to do what it takes to win a game. Um, and it, and then when he tries to, it's, sometimes it's too late. Um, If you look at the teams he's lost to in the playoffs when they should have won a Super Bowl, that right there is blasphemy. Um, You got – I just never will get that Colin Kaepernick game out of my mind. I mean, Colin was crushing those guys, running up and down the field. And Aaron Rodgers was supposed to be a guy that could go tip the tab with any quarterback in the league. And he just took an L right there. Like, didn't do anything to to shift – um, you know, the tide or whatever, being Aaron Rodgers, this guy with all of his talent. But like you said, he's just going to go out there and do, you know, do what he's going to do. Take the check downs when he has to, throw the ball away, hold on to it, take a sack. Um, yep. There's no plays where he's, you know, 
you know, guys like talk about Brett Favre. Oh, he's just going to go out there and just, you know, give it all, lay it all on the line. You know, Aaron Rodgers has never been accused of being that type of guy. No. Ever in his career. Ever been in the league over a decade. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, his stats are, I mean, you know, that's textbook stats. You know, <laughs> he has more than, you know, eight interceptions on a season. But um, when it comes down, something is going on if he's not winning or even making it to Super Bowls every year. You can really look at him and say he's more like a, like a Donovan McNabb than anybody. <laughs> because look at all of the conference championships he's gone to, you know, and, and yeah. no to show for it, you know. So he can get you there. But something that extra, he doesn't have that because he's such a game manager. So that's a good point. Thank you. Because um, the funny thing is, after they lost that game, my mind kind of switched, even though I consider him, I mean, he's good quarterback, whatever, but it's like, he wasn't taking the risk that you needed to win the game. Like, I mean, he was throwing the ball off a little bit. His his throws were off. And then you're like, something's not right. Like you just knew because you can't, because when they took away Devontae Adams in that game, he had no one else to throw to. He didn't know how to do it, in my opinion. Well, in the Niners game, uh, he, the Niners starting quarter got hurt and it was, uh, they matched up, I think Josh Norman. Yeah. On uh, Devontae Adams. Yep, yep. And Aaron Rodgers had every opportunity to take a chance there. And, and yep. if, if I see Josh Norman on anybody, I'm, I'm forcing the ball there. Mm-hmm. He threw the ball there, but it was one, he threw, he was, he threw two balls that were like, okay, Devontae might catch these, but they were both balls where he wasn't taking any kind of risk. And they both went over it. One went over his head and one went into the mm-hmm. ground instead of just yeah. jamming it in there. Now, that, that was late in the game. Yeah, and it was, and, that, and and I think anybody around him kind of knew this game was done because you can tell when, when a quarterback's not having it. That's when you start bringing the pressure. That's what, that's what the 49ers did. And he kind of fumbled and bumbled, and the game was, the game was like pissed away because now, now your people are talking to me. I, I, I have to kind of digress. And maybe like he's now he's a glorified game manager is because at the end of the day, he's not making the throws that you need to make. Yeah, he can get you it, but I don't think he can take those risks that what people want him to take. But if he you goes know, to Denver. See, I'm going to cut you off because I know you were an Aaron Rodgers guy. So that means, I was. That means our argument has persuaded you. So I feel like I won there. Uh, well, no, it. the thing is, it's like, because because that playoff game kind of switched my mind because uh, I was just like, I was like, listen, if you had all the capabilities in the world, right, you have, you brought back the person that like you wanted on your team because you were so frustrated. You hadn't even thrown him the ball. Like what? What's the point in arguing for your friend to come on a team? Probably, probably needed Jordy Nelson back too, but dude, if he had Jordy Nelson, I mean, I don't even know if he had the if he has the arm strength to throw to Jordy Nelson anymore. No, his really. arm is fine. It's just no. He he. But, I think he's. I think he's full of himself now. I think he's yep. kind of. Um. I think he smelled his own Kool Aid or drank his own Kool Aid a little bit more over the last couple of years, and uh, and it's sad because he could have been like the next thing because when you talk to green bay fans they still like Favre. i mean at the end of the day he like yeah. you're not going to you're not going you, to you can jump in there but i always say aaron Rodgers is not even the greatest quarterback in packers history people want yeah, to call no, him no. the goat he ain't i gotta find it i think i had a facebook post maybe last year the year before last about that i just put them together and i was in a state of shock nobody chose aaron Rodgers. nobody i didn't i didn't know that i you know i didn't aaron know that either you know me, I mean, I throwing the ball effortlessly the way he does, it really stands out to me. It's not even about arm strength. It doesn't say, I mean, you may have, might have a strong arm, but he's mechanically probably the best quarterback in NFL history. But you got to look at it like this. Aaron Rodgers um, doesn't make turnovers. He doesn't force turnovers. Brad Favre was a turnover machine. But guess what? Their playoff record is almost, it's literally, I think it's identical, uh, yeah. Brad Favre. 12 and 10 in the playoffs and Aaron Rodgers is 11 and 10 in the playoffs. So turnovers or not, Brett Favre, that's why a guy like him could be so favored uh, in terms of, you know, looking back on him in history because uh, he, he went out there and he was scrappy. He took chances, maybe thrown the interceptions, taking those chances, but nobody accused him of, you know, not going down swinging, not going down yeah. uh, without. Brad Favre um, and Rodgers took a lot of losses to guys he should not have lost to. <clears throat> so that's, that's it. If I had to get into a barroom brawl and I had to take Aaron or Brett, I would take Brett Favre any day. <laughs> well, I know. I also know why you love Brett too, but I won't. 
Um, we can switch gears here. Uh, <laughs> we can switch gears here. Uh, you had a post on your Facebook page about the Lovey Smith hire and uh, how people were kind of kind of hating on that because uh, he and even I, I I admit I I forgot about his Super Bowl run in Chicago and uh, two NFC championships there too with Jay Cutler. Um, but uh, I, I kind of hated on the hire. I was like he wasn't even successful at Illinois. So I was kind of hating there, and I should have should have gave the brother a little more respect because he he did he had some success there with with bad quarterbacks. So I wanted you to go ahead and uh and get into that, and then we can even go down the whole coaching hire thing a little bit too. Yeah, and if you're not careful, you know you may lump Lovey Smith in. He looks he has that big nice guy face, you know, looks like the guy. He's not going to cause any trouble with anybody in the locker room. But don't get it twisted. Lovey Smith is not, um, you know, uh, you know these guys I hate. Uh, uh, Marvin Lewis and uh, who's the other guy? Uh, Hugh Jackson. Uh, yeah. He's not, not even close to those guys. Um, Lovey Smith, okay, if you look at his uh, NFL career, his losses, his uh, losing seasons, you know, were six wins, maybe eight and eight, seven and seven and nine. He didn't even had a five and eleven season. He's not the guy that's going to go zero oh, and something, two and thirteen. You know these types of records. Levy Smith is going to give you a chance. He's going to figure out a way to get a guy like Rex Grossman to the Super Bowl. Um, he's gonna, you know what I mean? He's going to get a chance, and he's going to have a stout defense like he's always had uh, with the Bears. I think actually he was probably a good guy to um, put in there and, and develop Justin Fields and bring him back to the Bears. <clears throat> but, um, you know, if he can get Rex Grossman to a Super Bowl, what can he do with Justin Fields? Um, and so, and if you look at his Illinois career, I don't hold that against him. I knew when he took that job that Lovey Smith was just trying to stay active in coaching. Lovey Smith was never going to win at Illinois. Nobody wins at Illinois. They never have a quarterback. <laughs> they never have a quarterback. You can't, and um, you can't get on a guy who's an NFL coach for not being a great recruiter. He's never recruited. So, like the GM for that stuff. Um, but in the NFL, I mean, these guys have finished first uh, in the NFC North, third, uh, second, you know, consistently when he's been a coach. So this, uh, this hire is actually pretty good. And they might actually have a chance to do something um, if they get, you know, get a quarterback. I mean, they got – do they still have Deshaun Watson on the roster? They do, but uh, Davis Mills, he showed some flashes this past season. I, I expect him to be their starter. I like Davis Mills. I like them in college, too. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. He might be a, a, you know, Drew Locke type of guy who, you know, winds up, you know, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, he's got some potential. He's got kind of like a little, uh, like a Mac Jones vibe to him a little bit where he, he might be okay. Um, so we'll see, but I, I do like Lovey Smith. I think he'll be a successful coach. And, and it's just funny how, how fast people forgot about the Jameis Winston thing. He got fired. He wasn't supposed to get fired that year. Jameis Winston was, had those guys headed in the right direction is because of Lovey Smith. Um, and, and they fired him and then they brought the next guy in like, kind of like a Steve Kerr situation. Mm -hmm. who's yeah. off into <laughs> well, well, what, what happened there? was and, and I, I brought up this scenario before about when I was talking about how the Redskins had the whole Shanahan tree um, and there was precedent for a coach being fired because uh, Dirk Cutter, the guy who Tampa hired when they fired Lovey, was Lovey's offensive coordinator. He started getting mm -hmm. interview requests and they didn't want to lose him. So they fired Lovey. Lovey was not supposed to get fired because he was yeah. making some progress with Jameis. But and it was it, it caught everybody by surprise, but they wanted to keep him. That's why they fired Lovey. Mm. Yeah, because they went, I mean, the first year he was in Tampa, 2-14, and 14, and then they, he brought him up to, I mean, come on, up to 6-10 and 10 from 2-14. and 14. That's a that's a lot like uh, when Kyler Murray took over, Cliff Kingsbury took over with the Cardinals. They started out underachieving, but it wasn't a complete debacle. It just, it was a bad season. The next year they took a step, and you would only think that the year after that they should have been, you know, headed in the right direction. So, yeah, I, I never... I thought he got a bad rap and coming back, everybody's forgotten about that. So, you know, he's got, to, he's got to do some work, but I think they'll be fine. Yeah. I feel bad. I was looking up that, that stuff about the NFC championships today. That stuff, it should have been in my mind. Cause when Jay went to Chicago, I was following them. And I, how can I forget that? Lovey, Lovey was the architect of that. He, he definitely deserves that credit. So I'm glad we were able to, to get on that. Um, 
How do you feel about so you brought up the bears too? Mm -hmm. Had you ever heard of Eberflus? No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, you know, five times fast if I had to, but no, Eberflus, um, I don't know. I still don't know who he is, you know. I still don't. He's been in the news. I still don't know who he is. I think that uh, they'll be okay, I guess. But, um, you know, I couldn't tell you anything about him. One and done. One and done. They're going to look at this one year. He's going to screw up so badly. They're going to be like, oh, my God, what did we do? Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> is he a uh, – what, what type of coordinator is he? A defense he was the officer? Colts defensive coordinator. Yeah. Okay. And the I – I was just looking at that. The coach did have a top 10 defense this year. So I guess, you know, that's heading in the right direction, which brings me to my next point. Uh -huh. I'm going to say this about the Lovey Smith thing. Um, you know, top 10, uh, again, the Jimmy G as well. So, for example, like people um, get on Jimmy G and say it's all the defense. Uh, 49ers had a top 10 defense. They're ranked number nine. That's not blowing anybody's socks off. But it was Jimmy G who had that team together. Carson Wentz had a top 10 defense. They didn't make the playoffs. You got mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And so um, uh, guys like Lovey Smith, when they come around and they coach and they have these great defenses, you can't do anything anywhere if you don't have a guy at quarterback who's, who's kind of running and, and guiding the ship. Um, if you look at this this year alone, um, 10 the top 10 defenses, three of them didn't make the playoffs this year. You know what I mean? And, and, and you want to know who those teams are? Like I said, Carson Wentz's Colts, uh, the Saints, who also did not have a quarterback, and the Broncos, who also did not have a quarterback. So everybody else, you got Mac Jones, you got you know uh, uh, the Bucks, you got Titans, Cowboys, Chiefs, Niners, and Bills. All those guys got solid quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. So you know everybody ain't the the Ravens Super Bowl team. This you know does, doesn't need a quarterback. That's like few far in between you know you yeah. gotta have a gear in the shit um so you know that's how i feel about ebrew flus and <laughs> yeah if you don't have a quarterback hey good luck you know trying to win game yeah i was surprised they didn't give a, a black man a shot in that position because the gm they hired a black gm i, I, I fully expected him to to be <clears throat> the guy to make that move so him pulling ebrew flus out of his hat that i was taken aback by that um I'll be shocked if, if he has any success there. Um, but you, you, I, I would say that you should have picked up somebody who would be able to develop fields. And then you had a post before about people expect the head coach to develop the QB, but they'll be bringing in quarter, uh, coaches and coordinators to do that. So that won't have any right. impact on that. So the position coach, I mean, yeah. it wasn't where quarterback coach come in and play. Yeah. Here, you know? mm -hmm. um, but I think, uh, yeah, I think that they probably even had guys in the house that probably could have took that job. Um, they've been better than a guy like Ibraflus. Um, and then you got uh, you know, Eric the enemy. I don't I think Eric the enemy is probably not getting looks because in my opinion, he's a run, he's a running back guy. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's not a guy that people see as a leader of the team. And um, I think that that's probably working against him a little bit, aside from the Andy Reid thing. Mm -hmm. Um that I think he's obviously pulling the strings, but so, you know, while I'd love to see him take a job like that and see what they can do with Justin Fields, Justin Fields is kind of tricky. I don't know if somebody wants to sign up and put their whole reputation on Justin. Like, <laughs> we'll just save that for another we'll time. Yeah, I think with the um, Andy Reid saw the fact that he had been getting some flag for not calling the plays. So this past season, they were like, he would make sure he was on TV calling the plays a lot to kind of put that to rest, but he still yeah. didn't get a shot. We'll see. Um, down the road, how things play out with that. Um, Harish, mm -hmm. I saw you trying to jump in there. Did you have something you wanted to, to get out there? Yeah, I mean, well, well, going back to the Houston thing, I mean, I, I like the Lovey Smith hire. I've always liked Lovey Smith as a defensive coordinator wherever he went. And even when he was a head coach, yeah, he didn't win the big games, or he, but he got you there. I mean, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Rex Grossman was like, hey, I was partying until like whenever. So that's not Lovey's fault. I mean, if, if you break curfew, that's on you. And if you don't understand the thing, if you don't understand the magnitude of the game, that's on you, not on, like, not on anybody else. I mean, you're a grown man. You got to make your own decisions. But I, 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 have, a, I have a soft spot for Lovey because he, he, he changed around a lot of defenses that were poo-poo. I mean, he came in and he changed it. And it's just his discipline. I mean, he will have that team turned around next year. 
And they may not be like the world beaters, but they will be in games just like the Detroit Lions. They'll be they'll, they'll be in games this year, as Chris was pointing out. It's just a quarterback. If they can get that thing set, I mean, they, they, they'll, they'll make some noise. They'll make some noise. But besides that, man, I mean, with the Chicago Bears, as they always say, they 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 always take one step forward, two step backs. And with the evil who guy, who knows what he does and who is his person. But if he doesn't do well, the Chicago media will jump on him like anybody, like anything else. So we'll see how that pans out. It's going to be interesting. Justin Fields, as Dale and I have always stated, we don't like Ohio State, especially me. I hate Ohio State quarterbacks. And Dale has his opinions on that as well. well but... you, do for, you do for personal reasons. I do because <laughs> I don't. I don't. I think that system is not conducive to producing NFL no, talent I mean, in that I mean, position. So I mean, if you look at the NFL, no Ohio State quarterback that's ever came in and blew anybody away. It's I always been the running one. backs, the the wide receivers, their defensive and their offensive line. QB wise, I don't think they've ever produced a a good QB. <laughs> it's just not, not that I've seen. Yeah, um, I agree with you guys there. I don't know if it's necessarily. It's not necessarily the system, but I do think that uh, it's something to be said about guys, like I said, in the quarterback room, the quarterback coach, um, you know, who's ever developing those guys is not really, he's just developing it for the system, but doesn't really work on mechanics and things like that. Mm-hmm. They probably spend all their time in individual drills, doing option drills and stuff like that, instead of working on drop back pass. So that's on the, co- the coach really, but you got guys like Troy Smith, Terrell Pryor, guys that have won the Heisman trophies, Braxton Miller, you know, and these guys and asking um, Joe Burrow apparently was there and then Trent. Yep. Um, but yeah, I don't think those guys have been developed. So, and uh, uh, deep uh, Dabo Sweeney kind of said that about receivers at Clemson because he was a receiver. Um, he said college receivers don't get developed; they they mm-hmm. get turned into a you know a player for that system. But yeah, as far as going to the next level, lots of receivers flame out because they are they haven't been coached by guy they haven't been coached by receivers. Uh, right. he, Dabo said when when guys come to Clemson, they leave ready for the next level. His, his track record bears that out. You got uh, Hopkins, uh, Watkins, uh, more guys I could probably name out. You know, off the top. They were rec- recruiting pitch right there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. So. You got any more NFL stuff you want to touch on? I'm, I'm about to get into some NBA here. If you don't, uh, the trade deadline stuff. Uh, no, not really. Yeah. <clears throat> so we had uh, the Wizards made some moves here at the trade deadline, uh, getting rid of Dinwiddie's contract and Bertanza's contract and bringing in off injured uh, Chris Tapps Porzingis. Um, yeah. He's in 34 games this season, he's averaging 19.2 points, 7.7 rebounds, uh, two assists, and 1.7 blocks. So, I mean, clearly those stats say the man can play. It's just he's never on the court. So, mm-hmm. Not really sure what to expect out of that. Um, I did. I I was huge on the Dinwiddie move, them making it in the first place. I loved him in, in New Jersey, but he just it, he didn't. It wasn't coming together uh, there in Washington. Um, oh. He said he said after the trade, you know, these guys <clears throat> gave up on me. They, I was coming off an injury, a major injury, and I was coming back still. It takes a year to come back from that. They just gave up on me. He said I'm I'm going to keep working back, but Dallas that Dallas got one here, and I I like to hear that he's he's mad about it. I like to hear that he he still believes in himself. Um, he was a great player in New Jersey, so I expect him to come back and play well down there once he gets fully healthy. Reese, what you got? I mean, you can say all you want about injuries and giving up on it and everything. He should have let the coaches know if he's not going to be playing. I mean, I was shocked. In all honesty, I I was I didn't know Dallas was going to give up Christoph Perging, Pergingas for Dimwitty and Bertans. I I, that, that, I mean that that's like a like. A rookie GM mistake. You don't give off somebody who's 19th for unproven. There's like, yeah, he's injured, but when he's healthy and he's fully healthy, I mean, he is a monster. You can't, I mean, he's probably one of the best time, probably one of the best, um, I, I guess, shooting centers or shooting forwards or whoever you want to call it in the game. A 10 minute warning, just so y'all know. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll, I'll be quick. But I mean, what Tommy Shepard did was. Tommy Shepard ish like he I mean we were poo-pooing him for a while but they need to do something it wasn't there you can say what you want but oh they they didn't give me enough time but you weren't playing well I mean at the end of the day it comes down to productivity and if you're not gelling then something has to be done and Tommy got those guys off the books and brought in somebody else and to bring in Kristoff man that's I mean who knows man (laughs) now (laughs) you you, go ahead 
Yeah, no, I like the. Um, I don't like. Yeah, I don't like the uh, Dinwiddie move. I think that, uh, just like you said, I think Dinwiddie. Um, he's a guy. I like the guy. Uh, in six years in the league, he's been able to get himself built up to the um, to being a twenty and six type of guy. He's you know averaging twenty points a game with a little bit over six assists. <clears throat> um, and he's definitely a guy who's not afraid of the moment. Who'll go at you at the end of games, and who's not afraid to you know step up and be a leader. The only thing that happened to him was. Kyrie Irving happened to the team and, and then wound up messing up his whole uh, trajectory. So I think that it had the Wizards given him a chance to gel with the rest of the guys on that roster. I love the pieces that the Wizards are getting here. Um, they got, you know, Hachimura, they got Neto, um, you know, Caldwell Pope. I mean, whatever, he's a guy. But <laughs> yeah, any, uh, I really been, I was high on Denny coming out of the draft. Um, I think in, in the two to three years, he'll develop into a solid, you know, starter um, caliber player. Um, and then you got, you know, Cal Kuzma has been playing better. Um, they got some pieces here. And I think, you know, Porzingis, I think will gel pretty well with this roster. You know, um, he's, they're not going to expect much out of him. Um, he's just going to have to fill a role, uh, make some shots. He'll be kind of like, uh, I don't know, like a Kevin Love type of guy, you know, make some shots here and there, um, get a few boards, maybe even block a shot or two and then, you know, let the rest of the guys do what they do. So I think he'll be a good fit for this roster. He may not get hurt much because they don't demand as much out of him. Yeah. Hopefully uh, if he stays, stays healthy, uh, I think he can be the piece that convinces Bill to stay. I think he can fill that role, stretching the floor a little bit. Uh, Bill doesn't shoot as many threes as he used to. So opening up, having that shooter stretching the floor a little bit, opening things up for Bill to get in, in the paint to make, do some more work. Uh, next season when he comes back. I think that'll be helpful. You mentioned Kyle Kuzma. I, I've loved Kyle Kuzma since his rookie year. I think he'll be great. And another piece that Bill can gel with. Um, it sucks that it didn't work out with Dinwiddie. Like I said, I was high on him at first. I definitely, he definitely fell off of my eyes. And I, I, I admit I gave up on him too soon too. Coming off an ACL, it, it, it takes a year. So I should have been more patient with him too. Let me, probably scale, too. let me scale back a little bit. I forgot about Brad Bill. okay? Uh, if anybody should have gotten traded, it's Bradley Bill. We, uh, both, we both have been saying that, yeah. Two years ago, I think it was a year or two years ago when I seen this guy walk in with his head down, pouting in the middle of the game on the court when they were struggling, when they first got Russell uh, Westbrook. And this guy, no, it was right before they got Westbrook. Mm -hmm. And then Westbrook came and made Bill start playing harder. Yeah. Um, gave the Wizards life but after I saw that I just thought that you know Bill you've never been a guy who's you know you guys have had your chances to make um you know championship runs with uh John Wall and and you didn't get him over the hump so what are you doing out there pouting you know that's what I felt about it so if anybody should have got traded um it was Bill and then they should have kept Dinwiddie and they would have had a nice gel roster you know well we Bill's both we both were all over that, too. We both have been saying that. I love Bradley Bill as a player. I liked him when he came out. I used to compare him to Ray Allen. Um, and I, I love him. I just, he's not a guy I'm giving $240 million to. Because he's nope. not a guy who's going to take you to the championship. Yeah, I got to move the needle. So, no. yeah. The funny, I, I forwarded a text, like, you know, like an excerpt from uh, Beal's agent that they, they had a meeting with Beal on what his future is going to entail with the Wizards. After I read that, I was like, wait a minute. Did he have something to trade? Like, did he have some input? He did. On he did. Who's going to get he, traded? He absolutely did. And the guys, I don't know if you knew the inside. We, us being there in DC, uh, the guys on the roster didn't like Dinwiddie. He tried to stand up and be a leader when the team started to struggle, and they all told him to shut up. So oh. they didn't like him. That's the reason that they went up, went ahead and moved him. Bill, I'm sure, was behind that. So yep. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. I mean, even we, we, as we were harsh on Dimwitty, I mean, if you can't let other players speak up to know the deficiencies, then you're not going to be a team to get to that next step. And if one player like Beal, who we all think should never hand the ball at before half court, never should do it, just be a pure shooter and create your own shot kind of person, you're not going to get to that next level step. I mean, and trading Montrez, I was kind of disappointed with that trade. I, I, I didn't I, like it, but he's on an expiring contract. His, his deal is up. So they had to get something yeah. for him. Yeah, I mean, we got, I mean, yeah, I mean. They got a point guard, so. Yeah. Smith, he played well there before, so. 
I like that. Yeah, and, and, and I have no problems with it. it. It's just great. Like solid point guard, great defender. But, you know, sometimes you may have, because if Bill didn't injure his wrist, I think he would have been traded. I honestly think he would have been traded. It, like, it was I, I, that was it was getting hot, so I could see I could I wouldn't have been surprised. Um, before yeah. we run out of time, we have exactly four minutes left. Um, I wanted to, you've been saying stuff about Harden too. I want to get your thoughts on that move. <laughs> okay, two questions: Who who won the trade, and does that move make both teams the top two favorites in the East? I think. Uh, well, I mean, the Nets obviously run won the trade, but. I think it's because, you know, Ben Simmons makes it so the Nets don't have to cater to a guy like Harden, but also it balances them out. Like Kyrie's going to do his thing, but Kyrie does. I don't think he needs to be running the point guard. I think he needs to be, because people don't realize it's about Allen Iverson. He didn't always run point guard. You know, he, he was mm-hmm. coming off the ball. He was a lot like Steph Curry coming off yeah. screen. And he mm-hmm. can come up top um, and shoot the ball off the elbow. But I think, um, you know, Kyrie is best served in a role like that. He actually did it when LeBron and then went to the championship um, a lot of times because LeBron's going to handle the ball. So I think that uh, Ben Simmons, if he really gets comfortable and Steve Nash is the guy to make you comfortable, you know, handling the point guard. um, If he gets comfortable in that system, I think he can really make the pieces actually fit together um, in, in, in there. You know, a guy like Harden, um p- teaming up with Embiid um I just you'd have it, it would still fall back on a guy like Harden in the playoffs I don't think Embiid is dominant enough he's dominant but he's not Shaq where he's just gonna completely take over the game in the he's playoffs not Jokic. in the year <laughs> you know? so I don't think that they'll you know it's gonna go as far as Harden is gonna take you and we all know what that's gonna be so they're not gonna do much yeah, and I don't think they gave up too much depth. Uh, just real quick, they gave up uh, their backup center and Drummond, who's very good. Seth Curry uh, and and Ben Simmons wasn't playing, so that doesn't matter. But that depth, that like a depth, might end up hurting them. What were you going to say, Reese? We have two minutes. Wash, wash. I think it's a wash because at the end of the day, when the Nets play, in my opinion, they don't have a bench. You need a bench to win. It kind of proves when they lost to the Wizards, they definitely don't have a bench. Well, they, they <laughs> then, got some here with, with getting Drummond and Curry. That with, helps their depth. With the trade now, yes, but you need other players to come and rotate in. So it's going to be very difficult to fill one role. And and for the and for the Philly, the problem is Harden's a ball hawk. So at the end of the day, he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna start shooting up threes when you're like scratching your head. It's like you have Embiid, you have all these other players. Why are you doing it? And he's gonna take over games. And he's gonna lose the games that he takes over. I'm done. I'm, I'm curious to see how that all plays out. Um, It'll be interesting. interesting. Yeah, definitely. Uh, quick trade deadline move. Derek White went to the Celtics. Uh, I, I don't know what they were doing with that. I feel like he wasn't really in need, but yeah, that's it with that. Um, we've got one minute left. Uh, Chris, where's your talking hats at? I was about to say the same thing. Where's the swag? Where's the swag? I'm <laughs> not wearing it today, but you know, <clears throat> I, I don't know. I just did it. still in the box. You don't have to lie to us. <laughs> I gotta break it in first. It looks funny. Oh, right come on. Uh, no, definitely. Yeah. I had to I had to give my brim some work to get it, you know. Did you put yeah. the baseball into the thing and try to wrap it? Yeah, yeah. That, I, I got a couple more days. Next time I'll <laughs> good deal. So last picks. Uh Chris had the Bengals. We're both on the Rams. Um, yeah. So we'll see how that all plays. That should be a good game. But again, thank you for joining us. We're up on like 30 seconds here. Thank you for jumping on with us and staying the whole show. Really mm-hmm. appreciate that. And it was some fun debating back and forth. Yes, it was, sir. Thank you for that. Thanks for having me. Anytime. Anytime, bro. And Harisha, was a good show. Uh, Always. Thank you to Gary, too. Um, thank you all for joining us. Talking Hats, y'all enjoyed the game today. Uh, like, subscribe, support. Thank you so much. Talking Hats, we are mm-hmm. out.